Big question, are we at risk of a nuclear attack? Nuclear war is very much possible to happen any time. If you hear a large explosion, don't run to the window to see what it was. You'll get shredded by the blast. Here are the plain and simple facts. If a nuclear attack ever took place on US soil, you'd want to know about it. Why? Because if you didn't, that likely means that you were too close. And if you were too close, that means you're dead. Oh, no. A nuclear attack is one of the most frightening things that could happen, period. A nuclear explosion can kill millions. Just the explosion alone can wipe out countless numbers of people. Unfortunately, even after the blast, nuclear weapons can do damage through something called nuclear fallout. In essence, fallout refers to a process by which the wind carries radioactive materials through the air, and people, plants, and wildlife can all be poisoned. In a large dose, death can come soon after. Unfortunately, nuclear fallout can sicken or even kill people in its path. What can we do to prepare for a nuclear war? Well, here are the 12 tips on how to survive nuclear war. Tip number one, seek shelter right away. Aside from the geopolitical warning signs, your first warnings of an imminent nuclear attack will most likely be an alarm or a warning signal. If not, it will be the blast itself. The bright light from the detonation of a nuclear weapon can be seen tens of miles away from ground zero. If within the vicinity of the blast or ground zero, your chances of survival are virtually non-existent unless you are in a shelter that provides very good blast protection. If you are a few miles out, you will have about 10 to 15 seconds until the heat wave hits you, and maybe 20 to 30 seconds until the shock wave does. Under no circumstances should you look directly at the fireball. On a clear day, this can cause temporary blindness at very large distances. However, the actual damage radius is highly variable depending on the size of the bomb, the altitude of the explosion, and even the weather conditions at the time of the blast. Option number one, if you can't find shelter, seek a depressed area nearby and lay face down, exposing as little skin as possible. If there is no shelter of this kind, dig as fast as possible. Even around eight kilometers or five miles, you will suffer third degree thermal burns. Still, at 32 kilometers or 20 miles, the heat can burn the skin off your body. The wind itself will peak at around 960 kilometers per hour or 600 miles per hour and will level anything or anybody caught in the open. Option two, failing option one, get indoors. If and only if you can be sure that the building will not suffer significant blast and heat damage. This will at least provide some protection against radiation. Whether this will be a viable option depends on the construction of the building and how close you will be to the likely ground zero of a nuclear strike. Stay well away from any windows, preferably in a room without one. Even if the building does not suffer substantial damage, a nuclear explosion will blow out windows at enormous distances. For example, one nuclear test in the Novaya Zimla archipelago in Russia was known to knock out windows in Finland and Sweden. If residing in Switzerland or Finland, check if your home has an atomic shelter. If not, determine where your village, town, district atomic shelter is and know how to get there. Remember, anywhere in Switzerland, you'll be able to find an atomic shelter. When the sirens sound in Switzerland, you are advised to inform those who may not be able to hear it, for example, the deaf, and then listen to the national radio services. Option three, don't be surrounded by anything flammable or combustible. Substances like nylon or any oil-based material will ignite from the heat. Tip number two, remember that radiation exposure can cause large numbers of deaths. Initial radiation. This is radiation released at the moment of detonation, and it is short-lived and travels short distances. With the large yields of modern nuclear weapons, it is thought that this will kill few who would not be killed by the blast of heat at the same distance. Residual radiation, known as radiation fallout. If the detonation was a surface blast or the fireball hits the earth, large amounts of fallout occur. The dust and debris kicked into the atmosphere rains down bringing with it dangerous amounts of radiation. 
the fallout may rain down as contaminated black soot, known as black rain, which is very fatal and may be of extreme temperature. Fallout will contaminate anything it touches. Once you have survived the blast and the initial radiation, for now at least, radiation symptoms have an incubation period. You must find protection against the burning black soot. Tip number three, know the types of radiation particles. Before we continue, we should mention the three different types. Alpha particles, they are the weakest and during an attack are virtually non-existent as a threat. Alpha particles will survive for only a couple of inches in the air before they are absorbed by the atmosphere. They possess a minuscule threat from the exterior. However, they will be <laughs> fatal if ingested or inhaled. Standard clothing will help protect you from alpha particles. Beta particles. These are faster than alpha particles and can penetrate further. They will travel for up to 10 meters, 10 yards, before they are absorbed into the atmosphere. Exposure to beta particles is not fatal unless exposed for prolonged periods, which may cause beta burns, almost like a painful sunburn. They pose a serious threat, however, to the eyes, should they be exposed for a prolonged period. Once again, this is harmful if ingested or inhaled, and clothing will help prevent beta burns. Gamma rays. Gamma rays are the deadliest. They can travel for nearly a mile in the air and penetrate just about any kind of shielding. Therefore, gamma radiation will cause severe damage to the internal organs, even as an external source. Sufficient shielding will be required. A shelter's PF against radiation will tell you how many times less a person inside the shelter will receive radiation compared to open space. For example, RPF 300 means that you will receive 300 times less radiation in the shelter than in the open. Avoid exposure to gamma radiation. Try not to spend more than 5 minutes exposed. If you are in a rural area, try finding a cave or a fallen log in which you can crawl into. Otherwise, just dig a trench to lie in with stacked earth around you. Tip number 4. Begin reinforcing your shelter from the inside by stacking dirt around the walls or anything else you can find. If in a trench, then create a roof, but only if materials are nearby. Don't expose yourself when not necessary. Canvas from a parachute or tent will help stop fallout debris from piling on you, though it won't stop gamma rays. It is impossible at a very fundamental physical level to completely shield from all radiation it can only be reduced to a tolerable level. Use the following to help determine the amount of material you'll need to reduce radiation penetration to 1 1,000th. Steel, 21 centimeters, 0.7 feet. Rock, 70 to 100 centimeters, 2 to 3 feet. Concrete, 66 centimeters, 2.2 feet. Wood, 2.6 meters, 8.8 .8 feet. Soil 1 meter, 3.3 feet. Ice 2 meters, 6.6 .6 feet. And snow 6 meters, 20 to 22 feet. Tip number 5. Plan on staying in your shelter for a minimum of 48 hours, 2 full days. Under no circumstance leave the shelter in the first 48 hours. The reason for this is to avoid the fission products created by a nuclear blast. The most deadly of these is radioactive iodine. Fortunately, radioiodine has a relatively short half-life of eight days, the time it takes for half to naturally decay into safer isotopes. Keep in mind that even after eight to nine days, there will still be a lot of radioiodine around, so limit your exposure. It may take up to 90 days for the amount of radioiodine to decay to 0.1% of the initial amount. The other major products of nuclear fission are celsium and strontium. These have longer half-lives of 30 years and 28 years respectively. They are also very well absorbed by living creatures and can make food products dangerous for decades. These materials can be carried by the wind thousands of miles so if you think you're safe in a remote area, you are not. Tip number six, ration your supplies. You will need to ration to survive obviously. Therefore, you will eventually expose yourself to the radiation, unless you are in a specific shelter with food and water. Processed foods are okay to eat, 
so long as the container has no punctures and is relatively intact. Animals may be eaten, but they must be skinned carefully with the heart, liver, and kidneys discarded. Try not to eat meat that is close to the bone, for bone marrow retains radiation. Plants in a hot zone are edible. Those with edible roots or undergrowth such as carrots or potatoes are highly recommended. Use an edibility test on the plants. See how to test if a plant is edible. Open water may have received fallout particles and is harmful. Water from an underground source such as a spring or a covered well is your best bet. Use water from streams and lakes only as a last resort. Create a filter by digging a hole about one foot from the bank and drawing the water which seeps in. It may be cloudy or muddy so allow the sediments to sit. Then boil the water to ensure safety from bacteria. If in a building, the water is usually safe. If there is no water, there most likely won't be. Use the water already in the pipes by opening the faucet at the highest point of the house to let in air. Then open a faucet at its lowest point of the house to drain the water. Tip number seven, wear all clothing, hats, gloves, goggles, closed sleeve shirts, etc especially when outside, to help prevent beta burns. Decontaminate by shaking your clothes constantly and washing with water any exposed skin. Settled residue will eventually cause burns. Tip number eight, treat radiation and thermal burns. Minor burn, also known as a beta burn, though it may be from other particles. Immerse beta burns in cold water until the pain subsides, usually five minutes. If the skin starts to blister, char, or break, wash it with cold water to remove contaminants. Then cover with a sterile compress to prevent infection. Do not break the blisters. If the skin does not blister, char, or break, don't cover it. Even if it covers a large portion of the body, almost like sunburn. Instead, wash the area and cover it with Vaseline or a solution of baking powder and water if available. But moist, uncontaminated earth will do. Severe burn, known as a thermal burn, as it comes mostly from the high intensity blast heat rather than ionizing particles, though it can be from the latter. This can be life threatening. Everything becomes a factor water loss, shock, lung damage, infection, etc. Follow these steps to treat a severe burn. Protect burns from further contamination. If clothing covers the burn area, gently cut and remove the cloth from the burn. Do not try to remove the cloth which is stuck or fused onto the burn. Do not try to pull clothes over the burn. Do not put any ointment on the burn. Gently wash the burned area with water only. Do not apply creams or ointments. Do not use a normal sterile medical dressing, not specifically intended for burns. As non-adhesive burn dressings and all other medical supplies are likely to be in short supply, an expedient alternative is to use plastic wrap, also known as saran wrap, food wrap, or cling film. This is sterile, it does not stick to burns, and it is readily available. Prevent shock. Shock is the inadequate flow of blood to the vital tissues and organs. If untreated, it can be fatal. Shock results from excessive blood loss, deep burns, or reactions to the site of a wound or blood. The signs are restlessness, thirst, pale skin, and rapid heartbeat. Sweating may occur even if the skin feels cool and clammy. As it worsens, they breathe short, fast gasps with a vacant stare. To treat, maintain proper heartbeat and respiration by massaging the chest and positioning the person for adequate respiration. Loosen any constrictive clothing and reassure the person. Be firm yet gentle with self-confidence. Tip number nine. Feel free to assist people with radiation sickness, also called radiation syndrome. This is not contagious and everything depends on the amount of radiation one received. Here is a condensed version of the table. Tip number 10. Familiarize yourself with radiation units. GY gray equals the SI unit used to measure the absorbed dose of ionizing radiation. 1 GY equals 100 rad SV sievert, the SI unit of dose equivalent. 1 SV equals 100 REM, 
For the purpose of simplification, 1GY is usually equivalent to 1SV. Less than 0.05 GY, no visible symptoms. 0.05 to 0.5 GY, temporarily decrease red blood cell count. 0.5 to 1 GY, decrease production of immunity cells, susceptible to infections, nausea, headache, and vomiting may be common. This amount of radiation is usually survivable without any medical treatment. 1.5 to 3 GY, 35% of exposed die within 30 days. LD 3530, nausea, vomiting, and loss of hair all over the body. 3 to 4 GY, severe radiation poisoning. 50% fatality after 30 days. LD 5030. Other symptoms are similar to the 2 to 3 SV dose, with uncontrollable bleeding in the mouth, under the skin, and in the kidneys. 50% probability at 4 SV after the latent phase. 4 to 6 GY, acute radiation poisoning, 60% fatality after 30 days, LD 6030. Fatality increases from 60% at 4.5 SV to 90% at 6 SV, unless there is intense medical care. Symptoms start half an hour to two hours after irradiation and last for up to two days. After that, there is a seven to 14 day latent phase, after which generally the same symptoms appear as with three to four SV irradiation with increased intensity. Female sterility is common at this point. Convalescence takes several months to a year. The primary causes of death in general two to 12 weeks after irradiation are infections and internal bleeding. Six to 10 GY, acute radiation poisoning, near 100% fatality after 14 days, LD 114. Survival depends on intense medical care. Bone marrow is nearly or completely destroyed, so a bone marrow transplant is required gastric and intestinal tissue is severely damaged. Symptoms start 15 to 30 minutes after irradiation and last for up to two days. Subsequently, there is a five to 10 latent phase, after which the person dies of infection or internal bleeding. Recovery would take several years and probably never complete. Dever Alves Ferreria received a dose of approximately seven point SV during the Guanya accident and survived partially due to his fractionated exposure. 12 to 20 REM, death is 100% at this stage. Symptoms appear immediately. The gastrointestinal system is completely destroyed. Uncontrollable bleeding from the mouth, under the skin, and the kidneys occurs. Fatigue and general illness take their toll. Symptoms are the same as before with increased intensity. Recovery is not possible. More than 20 REM, the same symptoms set in instantly, with increased intensity, then cease for several days in the walking ghost phase. Suddenly, gastrointestinal cells are destroyed, with a loss of water and excessive bleeding. Death begins with delirium and insanity. When the brain can't control bodily functions like breathing or blood circulation, one dies. No medical therapy can reverse this. Medical help is nearly for comfort only. Unfortunately, you have to accept that a person may soon die, though harsh, don't waste rations or supplies on those dying of radiation sickness. Keep rations for the fit and healthy, should supplies be in demand. Radiation sickness is prevalent among the very young, the old, or the sick. Tip number 11, guard critical electrical equipment against EMP. A nuclear weapon detonated at a very high altitude will generate an electromagnetic pole so powerful that it can destroy electronics and electrical devices. At the very least, unplug all devices from the electrical sockets and antennas. Placing radios flashlights in a sealed metal container, a Faraday cage, may protect from EMP, providing the items being protected are not in contact with the enclosure. The metal shield must surround and protect the item completely and helps if it is grounded. The items to be protected should be insulated from the conductive shell since the EMP field washing over the shield can still induce voltages in solid state circuit boards. A metalized space blanket costing about $2 USD wrapped securely around a device wrapped in newspaper or cotton may act as a Faraday shield, helpful if one is far from the blast. Another method is to wrap a cardboard box in copper or aluminum foil 
place the item in there and plug the device into the ground. Tip number 12. Be prepared for subsequent attacks. Most likely, a nuclear attack will not be a singular event. Be prepared for another strike or strikes by enemy nations, or an invasion by the attacking party. Keep your shelter intact, unless the materials used are absolutely necessary for survival. Collect any excess clean water and food that is available. However, if the attacking nation does attack again, it will likely be in another part of the country. If all else fails, live in a cave. Okay, which of these tips on how to survive nuclear war did you already know? Let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then give this video a like and share it with a friend. But hey, don't go and prep for nuclear war just yet. We have cool more videos coming soon for you to check out. You can watch the other video here on the side and make sure you have subscribed to this channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell icon so you will be updated on all our new uploads. Remember, light your tomorrow with today. I did Haven. Enjoy.